you've lost three consecutive elections, right? And the whole point of politics actually is not about momentum or any of the stuff you just said. It's about winning a mandate from the electorate to actually govern and implement the policies that you want. Jeremy Corbyn had a manifesto that clearly resonated with lots of people, particularly young people, mm -hmm. but he can't now implement it because he lost. And so when I see all these imagery uh, coming out now of all the Labour lot basically celebrating, I'm like, actually, what you're celebrating is a failure to win a mandate to govern. And that surely should be... The priority now for Labour is how do you actually win an election? And is your leader actually the right guy to do that? Well, I think Theresa May certainly lost her Monday and lost her authority. But I do, I think, I take your point about the celebrations. I think, I think we in the Labour Party have had our weekend celebrating now. Now we get back to the hard work. We all return to the House of Commons this week. Our responsibility as Labour politicians now is to turn our attention, laser-like, to this Tory government which we think will collapse very quickly, to be taking them on in the House of Commons and preparing the ground either to take over as a minority government or preparing to go to the country again in a subsequent general election. Look, you know, it was a good result for Labour. It was a huge increase in our vote share. So let us have our, you know, our celebrations this weekend. But I do agree, it's time for us in the Labour Party now to turn our attention solely to taking on the Tories in the House of Commons and uh, exposing them yeah. and showing to the country that they cannot sustain themselves. These, because the celebrations seem to me to be very much about Jeremy Corbyn sort of poking his critics in the eye. This really is a triumph over expectations because people had such low expectations of Jeremy Corbyn. Really, in terms of minority government, you're nowhere near the Tories on the number of seats and you failed spectacularly and if there had been a different leader this would be framed as a failure because the whole point is to win enough seats to form a government which Labour failed to do. No, but we did have a good result. I mean, I take, I do, uh, I understand the point you're making, but we did have a good result. We did increase our vote share to 40%. 40, 40%. That's a huge increase on our vote share. One of the biggest increases in, the, in our history. We've got Labour MPs in Kensington, in Peterborough, in Canterbury. These are seats that we never expected to have Labour MPs in. But I know, but I do agree. It's like we've had our celebrations now. It's time to take on the Tories Does and it, point out yeah. that this Tory leader's authority is completely gone. And we've got to expose that in the House of Commons. You know, this is a Tory leader who can't even get rid of the health secretary who is completely failing. A Tory leader who can't get rid of a health secretary who is when we've got some of the worst waiting times on record in the NHS is a Tory leader who has absolutely no authority and whose position is untenable. Think, is it time, do you think, I mean, are there going to be, firstly, have you put to bed any idea of a leadership challenge, not you personally, but has the Labour Party <laughs> accepted Jeremy Corbyn is the leader, there are no other leadership bids to be heard? And secondly, is he going to bring in other members that he hasn't promoted so far, Chukura Munna, Yvette Cooper, perhaps bring back Ed Miliband, and form a shadow cabinet that perhaps is more inclusive well, I think there is now broad unity across the Labour Party. We've got unity of purpose about taking on this weak and unstable Tory government. So I, I think, yes, we are united. I don't see any prospect of a leadership challenge. It's the Tory leader who will be worrying about a leadership challenge, not the Labour leader. On your second point, I think, yes, the, right, the time is probably right to uh, uh, strengthen the, uh, the Shadow Cabinet. We do actually have a few vacancies now in the Shadow Cabinet because people retired at the general election and things like that. So I think it would be a good opportunity. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to get into speculation about names, but it would, of course it would be a good opportunity to, to strengthen the squad. Um, of course it would be, yeah. Has it been... I hope I say Shadow Health Secretary, though. <laughs> has it been... Uh, we sound a bit like uh, Arsene Wenger, Arsenal, don't you? You know, you got well beaten, but you're billing it as a massive success. You're all signing new contracts and you're looking to strengthen the squad. Um, let's just ask this question, which is, is it a case of being very careful what you wish for here, Mr Ashworth, in the sense that if you actually did have to have a minority government, you'd actually have to start paying for all this stuff that you've been promising the British electorate, which, as most people recognise, would be virtually impossible. You would all start falling out with your minority government pals, because none of you really agree about much, and at the end of it, you could actually end up with complete disaster. This way, 
it's almost utopia. You've got the Tories eating each other alive, you've got a dead duck Prime Minister, and you've got serial protester Jeremy Corbyn on the ascendant, and you can just sit back and watch them all collapse, can't you? Well, I think they are going to collapse, because as I say, it is, and as you say, it's a lame duck Prime Minister who can't even get rid of Jeremy Hunt when he's making a mess of the NHS. But look, if we get it to form a minority government, you'll see certainly on the NHS us bringing forward the investment into the National Health Service, giving our nurses and midwives a fair pay rise and reducing the waiting lists, the waiting lists which have just gone up again just last week under Jeremy Hunt's watch. And as I say, the Prime Minister can't even get rid of Jeremy Hunt. That's how weak she is. So look, if we get to form that minority government, I think we will prove some of the sceptics wrong and we will actually be able to deliver a programme of investment okay. in schools, hospitals, childcare and housing.